uh, as we mentioned last time about Surah Al-Ra'd and the main theme is to know more about the Quran and to expose ourselves more to get the blessings of the Quran. And that is by the virtue and by the ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's a great blessing. So you have a, a connection with the Quran and that mostly what we need and what we are looking for. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the blessings of the Quran. Allahumma ameen ya rabbil alameen. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst the people of the Quran. Because when you, when you read the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that Allah has his own group. Allah has his own people. So they said, Ya Rasulullah, who are the people of Allah? He said, Ahlul Qur'ani wa khasate. The people of the Quran are the people of Allah are the, the, the special group of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah make us amongst those people. Allahumma ameen, ya rabbal alameen. And it is with that time that we enjoy by, you know, knowing more about the Quran and getting closer to the, and, and try to dive more and more into the topics and the verses of the Quran, especially with the, 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 the first two rak'ahs of Salatul Maghrib we recited, almost the last page of Surah Ibrahim. That's the end of this Surah, chapter 14, which is Surah Ibrahim. And of course, we just wanted to tell you some of the information about the Surah before we dive into the meaning of the Surah and the main theme as well. But basically, we need to know why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had named this Surah, Surah Ibrahim, because Allah had mentioned the, the supplication, the dua of Sayyiduna Ibrahim when he brought Ismail to the, the, the Arabian Peninsula, to the Arabian land and to Mecca, right? He, when he brought them to that place, then he started to make a supplication. Allah mentioned that dua almost, it is half page, half page. It has the dua of Ibrahim السلام, that he is talking to Allah. Oh Allah, those, have, those people means his people has caused to mislead lots of people and they caused corruption. Oh Allah, I ask you to guide them and that will lead us to the main theme of the surah inshallah. Then he is talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh Allah, I wanted to give my offspring to be righteous, to be closer to you. Oh Allah, bless them. And he's making too much of the du'as. That's why Allah, because Allah had mentioned the name of Ibrahim. That's why the surah was named after him. And actually the surah of Ibrahim is Makki. She, it's, it's Makki surah. And means it's related to the aqidah, it's related to the doctrine, it's related to the, the names and the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is discussing lots of details about the creation of the heavens and earth, the creation and what those creation are, you know, have to do with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They need to submit, they need to declare, they fully surrender to the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Lots of things the surah are dealing with. And inshallah, we will come to the details, but just a, 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 like a background about the surah. This surah was revealed actually after Surah Nuh. We have Surah Nuh, the prophet Nuh, you know, we have lots of names of the, the prophets and the messengers, surahs named after them, like Prophet Joseph, Joseph, and Surat, Yunus, Prophet Yunus, and Prophet Hud, Prophet Muhammad, Muhammad Prophet Noah, Prophet Abraham. So, so this surah, Abraham, was revealed after the surah of Noah. And how many verses? that we have in Surah Ibrahim, 52. 52 verses in Surah Ibrahim. And we mentioned it is Surah Makkiya, except the 52 verses are were revealed in Mecca, except two verses were revealed in Al Madinah. Verse number 28 and verse number 29. Both of these two verses 
were revealed in Al Madina. So think about this. We can find the entire Surah Makki and the entire Surah is Madani, but in some Surahs, we have some exceptions. One of the things that we need to know about the Surah, it has 831 words. If you counted the words of the Surah, 831. And when it comes to the letters, it has 3,461 letters in the Surah. So this is the, the, so you can picture the Surah, how the length of the Surah is and how it is related to the name of the Surah. Also, one of the things that we, alhamdulillah, knew about the Surah, or, or generally about the Meccan Surah, the Surahs are Mecca, means revealed before the Hijrah of Rasulullah, are dealing mostly, mostly with the Aqidah, with the doctrine. But today, we have a different aspect of the Aqidah. I just wanted you to concentrate on that. We mostly, when we talk about the Aqidah, we talk about Allah, about the names of Allah. But that's not all the Aqidah. Aqidah means your belief, your doctrine. As I mentioned like two days ago in the Khatira after Fajr Salah, that we, we Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us two commands in the Quran. Allah said, Ya ayyuha ladheena amanu, all you who believe, ittaku allaha haqqa tuqati. I think Hajj Wajji remembers this. Have taqwa to Allah as he deserves to have. Okay? Another verse, Allah says, فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ مَسْتَطَعْتُمْ Have taqwa to Allah as much as you can. So it seems like for the first look, you think like there is a contradiction in the Quran. How could Allah say as, as he deserves to have means 100%. Allah deserves to have taqwa 100%. Then in another verse, he says, as much as you can. And we explained that in the Khatira after Fajr, that Allah had meant to have 100% taqwa for Allah when it comes to the aqidah, to the belief. But when it comes to the action, to the practice, to the ibadah, Allah told you, have taqwa as much as you can. You cannot, like in, in Salat al-Maghrib, we, we pray, all of us, alhamdulillah. And you can find two of people in one masjid in the Islamic center of New Purichi, behind one imam. They are listening to the same recitation. They are praying two rak'ahs, the, the three rak'ahs of Maghrib, and they finish together, they started together, but there is a big difference in reward between both of them. Why? Because people are different when it, differed when it comes to the action. You might find a person who is praying standing up, the other praying while he's sitting down. You might find in Ramadan, in Ramadan, one person is fasting. The other person is not fasting because he is traveling and maybe they are in one house, maybe, or the family member, family members for one household. Another person is not fasting because she is pregnant. Another person is not fasting because she is nurse feeding a baby. Another one is fasting, is not fasting because he is in the hospital, he's sick. So people are different. So Allah said, فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ مَسْتَطَعْتُمْ Someone has a back problem. So he cannot, you know, make ruku'a as the proper ruku'a. But because of the back problem, he just lean a little bit, not like the normal person or the healthy person. So we cannot tell him, no, do the proper ruku, otherwise Allah will not accept. That's ignorance. So that time we refer to that verse, have taqwa to Allah as much as you can. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, la yukallifu Allah nafsan, you memorize this in at the end of uh, Surah Al-Baqarah. لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا 
وسعها الله will not give any person the فرض or the obligation which is beyond their capacity الله will not give them that but Allah سبحانه وتعالى is so merciful but when it comes to the عقيدة the belief it has to be 100% do you believe in Allah yes so you need to believe in him as he is the creator the sustainer, the provider, the cherisher, to believe in his names, to believe in the attributes of Allah, to believe in the prophets, and that will take me to the, the second point. The aqeedah is not all about Allah. The aqeedah is about what? About the six pillars of Iman. Allah, his messengers, his books, his angels, his destiny and the hereafter. So that's what the Aqidah covers. So Surah Ibrahim is not dealing basically with the monotheism or the Aqidah related to Allah, but it is related to the messengers. That's why the main theme of Surah Ibrahim is related to the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it has you know, many points. Point number one, that the message of the messengers of Allah, the message of the prophets is one. What was the message? La ilaha illallah. There is no God, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And number two, do not associate any partner with Allah. That's number one. Number two is talking about the mission of the prophets that they will need to convey the message. Allah had given you the message and you as a prophet, your mission, your sacred mission is to convey that message. Number three, that while you are conveying the message, you will struggle with your people. That's why Allah mentioned the dua of Ibrahim in the, in the surah while he is struggling with his people. And remember, the surah was revealed after the surah of Noah, as he also was complaining and talking with Allah about his struggling with people, with his own people. So number one, convey, it's, it's one message. There is no difference <clears throat> between the message of Moses and the message of Abraham, the message of Noah, the message of Joseph, the message of Muhammad, the message of Hud, the message, it's the same message. Yes, of course, we have differences when it comes to the rules, to the Sharia, to the laws itself. But the basic message, which is the monotheism, that's why when people, when some people, maybe the non-Muslims, when I talk with them, with them, with all respect and love to each and every human being, that most of them, most of the people that I have met, maybe more than 90%, and I think that you will agree with me on that, that they do not know anything about Islam. They think that Islam is the religion of worshiping idols. They don't, they don't know that Islam has a link, a very solid link with all the prophets that were mentioned in the Torah, that were mentioned in the Bible. One of the people, a non-Muslim, I was talking with him about Abraham, about Noah, about, then he said, how do you know about Abraham? How do you know about Moses? That's in our Bible. I said, look at the Quran. We are believing in all of them. I know Abraham, I know Isaac, I know Ishmael, I know Moses, I know Adam, I know all the prophets and the messengers of Allah. We believe in all of them without any distinction. Simply, they are our prophets. They are our prophets. Don't say only Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He's the prophet of the last nation. Yes, of course. But we have a very solid connection. We believe in, in the revelation sent by Allah to them. So that's the, so the message is one. 
Since Allah created Adam, he sent only one message to worship your God. And of course, one of the things that makes confusion to those people, and I was listening to, the, to that lecture yesterday, is Allah is the God. You know, that's, that was the title of the, the lecture. And it was discussing the name of Allah. The name of Allah, as we say in Germany, Gotten, okay, means God. As we say in English, God. So simply, it's an Arabic word, means God. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, since he created the creation, he sent only one message. So the first point that we need to know about Surah Ibrahim, the singularity of the message. It's one message. Number two, the sacred mission of the prophets to convey, not to guide. That's very important. And that is what Allah discussed. That's why if you said, what's the main theme of Surah Ibrahim? It's the guidance comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not from the prophets. Allah is the one who is guiding. Allah is the one who controls and turns and flips the hearts. That's Allah. So they have one message and the sacred mission or the mission of the prophets is to convey the message not to guide. And why Allah mentioned this point specifically in Surah Ibrahim? Because it has a connection. Sayyiduna Ibrahim has his own father. Yes, in some narrations they said his uncle, but he, what he said explicitly in the Quran, he said, Ya Abati. Some of the narrations said that he was calling him Ya Abati, but he wasn't. Yeah, my oh my father. But explicitly in the Quran, he named him my father, oh my dear father. So Allah wanted to tell us. Ibrahim got the message, and by the name, Sayyiduna Ibrahim, he has a nickname. As Nuah, Nuah in Islam, we call him Shaykhul Mursaleen. That's the nickname of Sayyiduna Nuah. Shaykh Al Mursaleen. You know Shaykh? 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 No, no, I'm not Shaykh. I'm a student of knowledge. Okay? Shaykhul Mursaleen. Al Mursaleen, what's the Mursaleen? Al-Mursaleen is the plural word of Mursal. Mursal means a messenger, a prophet. So he is the shaykh of the, all the prophets and the messengers of Allah. That is the title. Okay. What about Sayyidina Ibrahim? Do you know his nickname? Khalilullah. But he has another nickname related to the prophets. Hmm. Hajwajmi. You know it. Just I will remind you, okay? No problem. We remind each other. Abu al-Anbiya, the father of the prophets. Okay? Abu, you know Abu. Abu al-Anbiya, the father of the prophets. And why is that? Because most of the prophets came from his offspring, from his progeny. The, when you see the two lines, okay, Abraham, then he has Isaac, and Ishmael, and from Isaac, he has Jacob, Joseph, and the rest of the prophets. Till we come to that, to, to our prophet, Jesus. And when we, from the other branch, Ishmael, then the prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's why they call him Abu al-Anbiya. Abu al-Anbiya, the father of the prophets. One of the things that you need to know also about the message. Sayyidina Ibrahim had the message. And what's the revelation was sent to him? Do you know? It has a name in the Quran. What's the revelation? Yes, Allahu Akbar. Suhufu Ibrahim wa Musa. It's called Suhuf. That's why some of the people, you know, our brothers are from Pakistan, from India, from Bangladesh. When we say, okay, give me the Mus'haf. They wonder, what, what's Mus'haf, Sheikh? Mus'haf means 
the, the, the pages of the Quran, the pages, when you put page after page and after page, you call it Mus'haf. That's why Allah called it Suhufu Ibrahim. Suhuf means the scriptures of Abraham. Okay? So we believe in all the scriptures of Abraham and the teachings of Abraham, of course. So he had a problem that he is calling out uh, on the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he's conveying the message. He's transmitting the, the, the scriptures to his people. And by the way, he had lots of people started to follow him, but wait, his own father denied him and did not, did not answer, did not follow him, did not believe in his message. So what is the message here? What is the message to us in the Quran? Allah wanted to tell us, Ibrahim is the father of the prophets. Ibrahim, he is very closer to me. He is my Khalil. We have two words, Khalil and Habib. Khalil means the close friend and Habib is the most beloved. So Ibrahim is Khalilul Rahman, Khalilullah. And the Prophet Muhammad is Habibullah. Okay? So, Sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka alayhim ajma'in. Allahumma ameen ya Rabb. So, Allah wanted to tell us the message, the guidance. No one can control the hearts. Even if he was the father of the prophets, he will never be able to guide his own father. Number two, the, the second example. You have the prophet Noah, he has his son, his own son. He couldn't guide him. And when the, 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 the ark was built and the, the flood came, he started to tell him, come on and jump into the, the, the ship, try to be with the believers. And the son said, no, I will climb the highest mountain to be saved from the flood and nothing will happen to me. Then he said, no one can change the command and the destiny of Allah that Allah had decided to destroy each and every corner and spot on earth. No one will live except those people are in the, po in the boat. So he couldn't even guide his own son and not only his son, his own wife did not follow. And the wife of the prophet, Lut, you know Lut? The prophet Lut, Allah mentioned at the end of Surah Al-Tahrim, darab Allahu mathalan lilladheena kafaru, those who had disbelieved. Then he mentioned the, the wife of Noah and the wife of Lut, they couldn't guide their own wives. So a man or a prophet couldn't guide his father. A prophet did not, couldn't guide his own son and wife. Another prophet did, couldn't guide his own wife. And number four, what's the fourth example? Yes, Allahu Akbar. The prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam couldn't guide his own uncles. And when we say uncles, that includes Abu Talib, and Abu Lahab, even Abu Lahab, he has a special surah in the Quran, the uncle of the prophet, and Allah had called him that he will be in the hell fire. That's the uncle of the prophet. So he couldn't control the heart of his uncle, Abu Lahab or Abu Talib. And you can see, but another uncle was accepting had accepted Islam. Do you know his name? Al Abbas. Al Allahu Akbar. See, Dr. Rahim had came back, mashallah. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. And Hamza too. So Al Abbas and, Hamd, and Hamza. So two uncles had accepted and two uncles had rejected. Abu Talib himself, the one who rejected and did not accept his message, he kept, you know, and has the dedication to support the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam 
for how many, for, for many years, he's supporting and defending, protecting the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu but he did not accept the message of Islam. So I wanted to deliver a very special message today to our brothers and sisters in humanity, like the, the non-Muslims. Do not think that Islam is a new message. Islam is not a new message. Islam is the same message of all the prophets and the messengers of God. And Islam wasn't found by the appearance or the existence of Saudi Arabia. Islam is not the religion of Saudi Arabia. Islam came even before the existence of Saudi Arabia. Islam is not a new religion. The message of Islam is not a new message. It's the same pattern. It's the same example, the same message of all the prophets and the messengers of God since he created the creation. One of the things that I wanted you to know, if you are struggling with a family member, if you are struggling with your own son, maybe sometimes I, I, I got lots of you know messages and and calls from our own community members. Imam, I have a problem with my son, with my daughter. They are not praying. They are, they are not you know, following. They are not uh, Islamically behaving and, and all this stuff. I'm telling them, listen, our message, our mission, even as fathers and mothers, is not to force anyone. Our mission, is not to guarantee that they will follow. No, our mission is just to convey the message. Then to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our message and to let them accept the message. Sometimes, I told you this before, Wallah, and I, I shared that when I was in the vacation with the, my brothers and sisters in Egypt. I told them about this story. One time I had a, a, a non-Muslim, he was asking about Islam and asking, he had lots of questions and, you know, arguing about lots of his, you know, like taking some of the, the texts from the gospel. He wanted to explain explanation. And sometimes he wanted some interpretations from the verses related to the Quran, verses related to the, the gospel and, 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 and the Torah. And I was hoping because he was so kind. He was so good person. I was hoping from the bottom of my heart that he will accept Islam. That's not for, not, not for my interest, of course, but that's for his interest. So at that time, I felt that he's very close, but he decided that's not the time yet. He wanted more time. Then I left, I was a little bit sad. So my wife noticed, she said, what happened? I said, I was hoping that, that Allah will guide his heart. Then we went to Walmart to pick up some stuff after Isha. In my way, while I'm driving to Walmart, I got a call from somebody and he was a little bit crying, you know, there is something. So he said, I was searching on Google about the Islamic sinners, and I am from Georgia. Then I found your number. Then I said, why not don't call you? I said, yes, brother, ask any question. He said, I have some questions about Islam. Then I started talking to him on the phone. Then I went, went, they went to Walmart, I took a sigh, and I started to talk with him almost like one, like more than one hour talking with him. And we finished our call that he declared Islam and said Shahada. I felt at that time, I started, you know, I made sujood when I returned to the home, thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the name. I was so happy. Allah did not want, want me to sleep while I'm sad. Allah wanted to give me a gift at the end of the day. 
alhamdulillah. But it was a message from me, for me. A person that you worked with for more than four months, for four months, but he did not accept, at least for that time, at, at, till that time. And another person, you just talked with him one hour, then he accepted. Who is the one is guiding and controlling the hearts? That was the message Allah wanted to teach me. It's not because of your talent. It's not because of your knowledge. It's not because of your skills. It's not because of something that you have. It's because of Allah. Your message is only to convey the message. Your mission is to convey, is to throw the seeds. And Allah is the one who will take care of it. And we have our brother. Our brother here, mashallah, alhamdulillah. Yes, for how many years, how, how many months that you came and you talked with me? Eight months. Then like for eight months, he was talking with me, you know, visiting, sending messages. And subhanallah, all of a sudden, he, he, he like had a cut, like a disconnection. I, I thought at that time, that maybe he had something and he changed his mind. But all of a sudden, started to come back. You might have some issues if you cover it. And I wanted to know more. Then, then, then he accepted Islam, alhamdulillah. That tells you that the guidance comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, so, yes, almost one year before even you talked to me. So one, one year and eight months, that's you, his journey to Islam. You might find a person, his journey to Islam is to talk with you. Our sister, Sister Annie, you know, the one that accepted Islam last Jumu'ah after khutbah. Subhanallah, when I talked with her, she said, listen, I believe, I believe, I didn't even accept before that we have multiple gods. I believe in the oneness of God. I believe that we have one God. I said, congratulations, you already half Muslim. You know, she said, what? I'm half Muslim. I said, yes, I didn't make anything. You came to me and you already 50% Muslim. You already have la ilaha illallah. The, the, the thing that you need now to have Muhammad or Rasulullah. So let's work on that. And it didn't take, you know, 20 minutes, alhamdulillah. 20 minutes. So it's it's something just I need you to think about. Most of people nowadays, if they knew the, the real message of Islam, wallahi, and I was talking with, with my brother about this, okay, about not to hear about us, but to hear from us. To know the real message of Islam. Surah Ibrahim is all, a is all about the truth and the true message that Allah had sent the prophets with. So the guidance comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I need you to be aware of this. We have, as we mentioned, we have two types of guidance that Allah had mentioned in the Quran. Guidance, which has the meaning of delivering the message. So if you came to the masjid and you have some of the misconceptions and you went astray, then you talked with the Imam, Imam Jalal, Imam Yahya, or you know any Imam, and you talked with him, you know what, I'm, I'm, I feel lazy, I, did, I do not pray, I, I committed a sin, for example, I went so far from the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, could you please give us, could you please give me some advice? How can I come back? How can I declare my repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Then that Imam will give you the advice, will follow up with you, and he will tell you what to do what, and to stay away. Like, you know, the hadith of the, the person <laughs> who had killed 99 persons. He had killed 99 persons. And he had the question, he has, he has, he has asked about who is the most person had worshipped Allah the most devoted person to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he said, 
you know, I had committed that major sin that, that I had killed 99 persons. Is there any way to come back to the way of Allah? He said, no way. <laughs> you already, you already got a credit and you finished all the credits, you know? There is no place. So he said, if that is the case, and I'm going already to the hellfire, so <laughs> why not make it 100? So he killed him. He killed him, if that is the case. After some years, he asked about the most knowledgeable person on, on, in the area. So they told him about a person so and so. He said, I have killed 100 persons. Is there any way that I will come back to Allah? He said, why not? Why not? Who can stay between you and Allah? No barrier between you and Allah. Always you have the gates of repentance open to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But I have a, a certain advice. Leave that land, leave this area, leave this country, the country that he was living in at that time, leave this country because you are surrounded by lots of bad people, lots of bad friends. And go to a certain land, which is so and so, and worship Allah with them. And at that time, you know the rest of the, the story that he died in the middle of the way. So my point here, maybe one advice from a scholar, from Iman, from Sheikh, from a brother, from a friend, from a colleague, from a family member, from a neighbor, it can change your life. It can transform you. So that's the case. So this, this, this is in the Arabic language, you, the, the advice, which is transforming people, we call it hidayah, means guidance. He was a reason to get the hidayah, but he, he wasn't the person that he turned your heart because lots of people that you give them nasiha, but they don't listen. They don't listen. They don't obey Allah. But the only one has the, the guidance, the absolute guidance, the absolute control of the hearts is Allah. You remember the story of Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal? While he is going, sorry, sorry, Imam Malik. Imam Malik was going, while he is going to pray Fajr. So what did he find? He found a person laying down on the ground while he is saying, Allah. When he get closer to that person, he started to smell wine. That that person is drunk. And his subconscious is saying what? Allah. He is drunk. He, don't, he, he is not realizing what he is saying. But he is saying Allah. Then what happened? He brought, he brought the water. He said, it's not fit. It's not appropriate to the name of Allah to be, to come out of that mouth. Has the smell of the wine. Then for the sake of Allah, he started to clean up his mouth to remove that bad smell. So the name of Allah will come out from a clean mouth at least. He wanted to honor the name of Allah. And because of that, Allah had guided that person. After two days, while he is praying Fajr, after he prayed, he found a person praying with him in the masjid. That he, for the first time, he sees him. So he said, who are you? He said, I am the person that you cleaned up his mouth two days ago. He said, how do you know about this? He saw, he said, I saw you in my dream. I saw you in my dream that I'm drunk and you are cleaning up my mouth. And I repented to Allah after I'm, I saw that dream. I repented to Allah and I came. Then Imam Malik went back to his house. 
then Imam Malik was wondering how come that he sees me in his dream then Allah changes his heart like this and he was wondering thinking about how that happened then Imam Malik saw in the dream that Allah is talking to him and telling him Ya Imam Tahharta famahu min ajlina فَطَهَّرَ اللَّهُ قَلْبَهُ مِنْ أَجْلِكَ That you have cleaned up his mouth for our sake, then we have cleaned up his heart for your sake. Think about this. Allah had cleaned up his heart because Imam Malik was very sad, feeling sad about that person. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide all our hearts. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the knowledge that can transform us from a state to another state. May Allah expand our chests to accept the true message of Islam. Allahumma ameen ya rabbal alameen. Jazakumullahu khaira. Barakallahu feekum. I just wanted to thank each and every one attending our, you know, our session. And I can see, mashallah, uh, all the brothers and sisters in Tiaz Khan, from Orlando, mashallah, brother Sharif, Iqbal, Khadija, Adam, mashallah, welcome back, sister, Auntie Mariam, mashallah, jazakumullah khairan for joining the, the lecture and the session, Dr. Siddiqui, Bibi Aisha, brother Muhammad Firdaus, mashallah, welcome back, brother, brother Muhammad Nasruddin and sister Azima, and we have Zoom user, I don't know the name, Bibi Asad, I think sister Bibi Asad uh, uh, from, um, outside no 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 from she's from uh, the united states and uh, recently mashallah she started to receive our newsletters sister brenda allahu akbar brother sharik iqbal jihad uh, and uh, sister fifi dean ibrahim shaliza dean i have another person he didn't have his name that's the iphone so may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of you allahumma ameen جزاكم الله خيرا بارك الله لي ولكم في القران العظيم ونفعني واياكم بما فيه من ايات الذكر الحكيم صل اللهم وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين yes ما شاء الله brother ناز yes sister ناز from london from uk الله سبحانه وتعالى bless all of you اللهم امين welcome our sister to the session جزاكم الله خيرا بارك الله فيكم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته